right, we're going to take your homework out. I trust you did well on your test, as those in here did as well. Those who took the test. And uh, turn in your books to page 367. Page 367. And uh, you have review numbers 19 to 33. Page 367. Unit 367, 368, review numbers 19 through 33. And uh, just practicing with fractions, decimals, and in the section we're about to cover here, as you did your homework reading, talking about probability, the ability to go back and forth between fractions, decimals, and percents is so valuable. So a uh, really good review exercise for us here on numbers 19 through 33. You worked here. Good, and then turn the page. Good, and good. All right, let's take a look at this and see how we did number 19. Expressing as a as a decimal. Expressing as a decimal. Three fourths as a decimal. Scott, I know you didn't do it, but you got this. Point seven. Point seven. I'm going to write that down now, so you can feel like part of the class. What about five eighths, uh, Scott? Good. Point six two five. How about seven ninths, uh, Scott? <laughs> point seven repeating. Hey, you can get none of nothing. All right. Uh, point zero three percent. Changing a percent to a decimal here. Um, Scott. Uh, oh, oh, no. Scott. Uh, I went the wrong way. You sure did. <laughs> point zero 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 three. Point zero 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 three would be correct. Uh, Scott, what about uh, number 23? 25 percent would be? Point two five. Oh, here's an interesting one. 16 and two thirds percent. Good, point one six repeating. Sixteen point six repeating, but then we move the decimal over point one six repeating. By the way, what is number twenty three as a fraction class? One fourth. One fourth. What about number twenty four as a fraction? Um, one sixth. One sixth. One sixth. That wasn't asked of you. I was just curious if you remembered. Uh, now numbers twenty five through twenty seven. These you are wanting to write as a fraction that is reduced. Number twenty five is memorized, class. Two thirds. Two thirds. We should have known two thirds from that one. Oh. But number twenty six isn't. We need to remember the percent means class hundreds. So when you see sixty five percent, that literally means class sixty five oh. hundredths or over one hundred. And then we can reduce it down, Lana, to get thirteen twentieths. Thirteen twentieths is correct. Now the next one's kind of sticky. We have 27.4%, um, which means 27.4 hundredths. But can you have a decimal within a fraction? No. So if we have 27.4 hundredths, I've got to move the decimal out. Well, to move the decimal out in the top means I also would have to move the decimal out in the bottom, in the denominator. And now we'll try to reduce from here. Clearly, we can reduce both of these numbers at least by two. I don't know about anything else, but I know two will work, right? So if we were to divide a two out of the bottom, let's go back because it's easier, I would get 500. And if I were to take a two out of the top, anyone? 137. 137. And that's as reduced as you can get it. Did anyone happen to have 137 500? No. Does it make sense now how to work with something weird like that? Just put it up there as hundredths, move the decimal out, and just add as many zeros as you need to in the bottom, and then try to reduce from there. It's kind of a weird one. And then numbers 28 through 33, writing as a percent. <coughs> Bless you, number 28. Scott? 47.3%. Uh, 47.3%. What about number 29, Scott? 2,820%. Yeah, 2,820%. What about number 30? Lana? 7.3 repeating percent. Okay, we can go 7.3 repeating percent. What's, a, what's another way to say 0.3 repeating, though, anyone? One third. One third. So I like 7 and a third percent better, but it's not wrong to say 7.3 repeating percent. Uh, what about 1 sixth, Joshua? Um, like 1 sixth repeating percent? No, uh, Lana? I put 16 and 2 thirds percent. Good, 16 and 2 thirds percent. Oh. Here's the idea. You know that 1 6 is 0. 0.16 repeating. So that's 0. 0.16666 and so forth. 
So when you move the decimal twice, it gives you 16.666, blah, 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 or 16.6 repeating percent. You could leave it this way, or the preferred would be the two-thirds, which is 0.6 repeating. Make sense? A little refresher for us. Again, all of this is stuff we talked about before, but a good refresher. What about two-fifths as a percent? Scott? 40%. 40 good. And what about three-eighths? Let's come back to Joshua. Um, 37 and a half. Good, 37 and a half percent is correct. Any questions on those? Any questions on those at all? All right, turn back in your books, if you would please, to page 364. I had you read over these first few pages of chapter eight. Yeah. Uh, I think I mentioned before, we're gonna skip over a little bit here. I've uh, added a lot of review exercises for you that the curriculum just doesn't give me time for. I've added speed drills the curriculum doesn't give time for. And uh, where I'm stealing that time back is I'm wiping out chapter seven. Now, I will forewarn you on standardized testing, you'll see stuff from chapter seven and you won't know how to do it. I don't really care if you know how to do it because next year you're gonna learn all the stuff you need to know. And the next year in Algebra 2, we'll review it again. And you'll know the chapter seven stuff like the back of your hand later on. You'll know it well before you ever graduate high school. You're gonna be fine. I'm more interested in you being prepared for life than as an eighth grader knowing how to graph in Cartesian coordinates. I want you to know life stuff, and this is my only chance to do life stuff. There's not time in my other classes to do that. So all this cool graphing stuff. Now, if you're interested and you're just like, man, that looks really neat, then by all means, read over it. You've got questions after school. Mr. Jesse, what is this? Hey, can you show me how to do that? I'd be more than happy to show you, but we're not gonna take class time to go over chapter seven in this class. Um, again, we're gonna spend the next couple of years going over it. Chapter eight, on the other hand, is something that I won't cover again until 10th grade in Algebra two. And they're the only two times we're gonna cover it. So I do wanna spend some time here on chapter eight. To me, that's more important and frankly more practical than the material you're going to see in chapter seven. So with that said, we skip to chapter seven. We're talking about probability. I think you talked about this in seventh grade. Is that correct? Probability. And basically, Scott's pulling out that probability exercise I gave him on the hundredth day of school. Uh, probability essentially is the likelihood something happens. For instance, somebody might say, I wonder what the likelihood is that I will pass this class. That depends on how hard you work, right? Um, around Valentine's Day, there's, I wonder what the probability is she'll say yes to go out with me. And I see your eighth graders stop asking questions like that. Uh, but anyway, probability, what is the likelihood? Uh, I did a fun probability there with a massive box of what used to be chocolates. It's now just the lid of the chocolate box. It has 74 different chocolates in it. Well, what are the odds I get this chocolate if I just reached in and grabbed it random without feeling around, or if I shook all the chocolates out of the box and just sort of reached into the pile and grabbed something, what are the odds? Well, that's called probability. And we're gonna talk about all different kinds of probabilities. You can see all different kinds up there. Now everyone's thinking about chocolate. But anyway, the probability, the likelihood something takes place. So make sure you note that term, uh, if you'll let him in. Uh, if you'll note that term on page 364, probability, the likelihood of an event occurring the likelihood something happens. Basically, probability is simply a ratio, a comparison of two values. First of all, in a probability problem, we want to have the number of desired outcomes in the antecedent. How many things do you want to happen? Um, and then the uh, next would be the number of possibilities would be in the consequent. Possibilities. Somebody's being loud back there with the bottles to be quiet. The number of desired things versus the number of possibilities. For instance, the very first thing we see over there, what are the odds of taking a, a bunch of chocolates that I dumped out of the box and happening to pull out a milk chocolate messenger boy, which sounds really weird, okay, but Whitman samplers always have at least one little chocolate that's solid milk chocolate shaped like a little boy delivering a box of Whitman sampler chocolate. So anyway, there's only two of them in the whole box. So you want a milk chocolate messenger boy, for instance. Well, there's two of them in there. Those are two things you could desire to happen. How many total chocolates are in the box? 74. And of course we would reduce it down like we always reduce ratios and fractions to a one to 37 chance. Pretty straightforward. Probability, of course, could also be written as a decimal, but I'm too lazy. And it could also be written as a percent. If you write it as a decimal, but I was too lazy for that, so I'm definitely too lazy for a percent. In this class, we will typically leave our uh, probabilities in terms of ratios because 
is easier. So although technically you could go decimal, you could go percent, and maybe we'll look at some that will do that, especially if the numbers work out easily. But at its basic, that's all probability is how many things do you want to happen versus how many possibilities are there. So if you're like, what are what the odds are she would say yes if I asked her to go out with me? Well, yes is the desired outcome. How many possible answers should could she give? Well, she could say no. She could say yes. She could say not in a million years. She could say, well, she, we wouldn't say that. Uh, she could say, she could laugh, she could spit in my face, she could scream and run away, she could, and you add all these possibilities in there, and the odds don't look real good. Now, if you're one of those just real pragmatic types, she'll either say yes or no, I got a 50% chance. Maybe, maybe not, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, it depends on how much you consider possibilities to be, I suppose. Um, there's an example here of a single die. Okay, now instead of using little dots like are normally on a die, they actually put numbers so we don't have to read dots. It might be very hard for some people. Uh, but anyway, they have a little die here with five, with six numbers on it, right? You roll the die, and um, let's suppose we wanted a five to come up. The way we would express probability is with a capital letter P, and then in parentheses, what do you want to happen? Well, we would say this is what is the probability of a five? You would simply write P. And in parentheses, 5. What's the probability of a 5? Well, how many different numbers on the die say 5? Only one. That's one desired outcome. For instance, if you were playing a game, how many play games that involves dice? So, okay, Monopoly maybe, or different. And you're like, you ever been there like, please give me this, please give me this number, right? Mm -hmm. Or anything but this number. <laughs> or in Monopoly, anything but this number, this number, or this number. And those are the places that have the hotels on them, you know? And you're like, anything but this. Well, of course, Monopoly uses two dice, so it kind of shakes it up, but whatever. Um, but let's suppose we really wanted a five. Well, what's the probability we get a five? Well, there's only one five on the die out of how many total possible numbers could come up? Six. There could be six. So the probability of a five then is simply one to six. Does that make sense? Well, let's suppose we wanted the probability of an even number. Well, we would put it parentheses, and uh, here, what's the probability? And you can even write words in the parentheses. What's the probability of even? Well, how many even numbers are on the die class? Three. Three. Out of how many numbers total? Six. Six. Now, we always reduce. So we wouldn't leave it as a probability of three to six. We'd reduce that down to one, one to two. And again, it's a ratio, so instead of saying one half, but hey, on a quiz or test, you're not saying it out loud. You're just writing it down. So if you think one half, it's not a sin. Now, here's one. If they wanted a decimal, we could do it. 0.5, or as a percent, we could say 50%. So a lot of times, odds are given in percentages as well. There's a 50% chance. And when it's super easy like that, I don't mind. I do mind. All right, so uh, what's the probability of, uh, let's just say, uh, a number that is greater than 4? What's the probability of rolling a number greater than 4? For instance, let's suppose you're on this particular spot in a game, and you're like, okay, in order to jump over these things, maybe it's hotels on Boardwalk and Park Place, in order to jump this, I've got to roll something bigger than whatever. Okay, well, let's just say I need to roll something bigger than four. How many numbers on the die are bigger than four? Two, Two five, and six. Out of how many numbers on the die? Six. six. So we would say the probability of rolling something bigger than four is one to three, one to three which as a decimal, 33 0.3 repeating, or as a percent, 33 and a third percent. 33 and a third percent. I, uh, I watched for the first time ever a, a game show that's on ABC. Um, never seen it before. It's something that a card, some card, I don't know. There's this game where there's these playing cards, and they've got to like pick, is the card going to be uh, higher or lower? And if they're higher, you know, then they, they get to keep it. And if it's lower, then they have to get reset back or whatever. Well, basically, what it boils down to is, if you have like a 10, there's only four cards higher than a 10. There's nine card, or eight cards lower than a 10, because ace is technically higher. So probability, they're going to say, if they see a 10 up there, they're like, um, lower? Now, it might be higher. They might have a king next instead of but probability, and they're always going to go with probability, which now makes you wonder, are those cards actually random, or are they strategically picked? Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, but I'm like, there's no suspense in it. Like, the only suspense is chance, like luck of the, luck of the draw here. Um, I, I will say, too, um, part of it, too, that I would ask a question, like in a survey of 100 people, 100 pet owners. How many pet owners do you think talk in a baby voice to their pet? Oh. And the guy gets to make a guess, and the, the uh, opponent has to say higher or lower. And the guy's like, I think, 
I think 82 would probably talk in a weird, in a baby voice to their pet. And I'm like, are you serious? You pick a number that high? You're giving that other person 81 chances to beat you. And you've only got 18 chances to win. Pick a number like 60. Make it interesting. Like, how stupid are you? Don't pick a number as close to the middle as you can and fudge. Anyway, uh, but anyway. But me being a math brain, I'm like, do you not understand probability? <laughs> but anyway, so I mean, probability can win you big bucks one day even, potentially. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's totally free and random. Um, questions on basic probability, we got this. Okay, look at, if you would, the example problem on the next page. This is kind of a fun example. Uh, it's not as chocolatey as my, my bulletin board over there, but uh, go ahead and read this problem for us, if you would, Joshua. Jeremy has a bag of colored candy that contains three red, one orange, four yellow, five green, two blue, and five purple candy. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> Find the probability of randomly drawing a green candy from the bag. All right, so uh, now the question is, is the green sour apple or is it lime? It's probably sour. Sour apple? Is that good or bad? I don't know. It depends. Anyway, um... So for whatever reason, we want a green candy. How many green candies are in the bag, class? Five. five. So the number desired is five of them. There are five chances in there he could get a green. Out of how many total candies? Well, that's where you got to add them up. Three plus one, four. plus four, Eight. plus five, 13. plus two, 15. plus five. 20. Yay. OK, so 20 total candies in the bag. Okay, which is a, is that a big pack or a small pack of Skittles? Assuming they're Skittles, it doesn't say. It's a small That's a small pack of Skittles. Like, I never counted the Skittles. I just no. eat them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like a small bag would be a small pack, or a big bag, or king size, or the box. That's what I like, because when they put it, start putting it in a box, you know it's a lot more, but you also pay more for the packaging. Right, so like, I, my personal favorite would be peanut M&Ms. I like those better than Skittles. Love peanut M&Ms. Uh, but anyway, um, so five to 20. Reduce that ratio down to one, one to four, which would be 0.25 or 25%. There's a 25% chance he draws a green candy out with a single draw. Does that make sense? Now, some different properties of probabilities that we want to talk about here. You understand if there is a one to four chance that he draws green, if that is the probability of green, then the probability of not Green would be what? Um, 15 to 20, which would be um, 3 to 4, which would be 75%, correct? Yeah. You understand the probability of something not occurring is going to be 100% minus whatever the probability of something occurring would be. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. For this reason, we can say this, that the sum of all, uh, uh, by the way, let's suppose we wanted the probability of red. How many red candies were in there? Um, three. three. So the probability of red would be three to twenty. Three to 20. Uh, twenty or twelve. Uh, what about the probability of orange? Um, one, one to twenty. One to 20. Yellow. Four to twenty. One to five. Oh, Reduced. right. Uh, probability of blue. Um, one, one to, to ten. One to ten, and probability of purple. One, um, to, one to four. One to four. One to four. One to four. Right, same as the green. Um, now, if you were to add all of those together, you know what you'd get? Twenty to twenty. So a rule of probability, you see there, is the probability of all outcomes must add up to one. All the outcomes of possible have to add up to one, meaning 100% chance that one of those has got to happen. Now, you said, what about the probability of the gray candy? This is way before your time. This is even before my time. But M&Ms actually had this thing of find the gray M&M, win a million dollars. And they put just a few gray M&Ms, which just sounds weird, into all these different packs. And people went nuts trying to find a bag that might have gray M&Ms in it. Because then they could win a million dollars if they got the pack with the gray ones. Uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> well, if they didn't make any gray, though, which would be like a really big ripoff stunt. But you'd sell a whole lot of M&Ms before you got sued and had to pay all that money back. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> they didn't put any. That probability would be zero. But if, as far as actual possibilities, the sum of all probabilities has to equal one. Write that off to the side, if you would, of your notes. The sum of all probabilities in a certain situation has to equal one. I'm just going to do prob for probability, because that's a really long word and I'm lazy. The sum of all probabilities must equal one. But you understand this then, you cannot have more possibilities that you want than possibilities that exist. Does that make sense? For instance, 
What's the probability of green? There cannot be 21 green candies in a bag of 20. Agreed? Now, the label might be printed wrong. It might say there's 20, and there's really 21 green candies, and it's all green in that package, okay? But it might say there's 20. Okay, it, you cannot have more of something that actually exists. So we also understand this. Probability can be as low as zero. What's the probability of a gray candy? There weren't any, zero to 20. But you can never have a probability greater than 20 to 20 or 1. So each probability has got to lie between 0 and 1. If we represent probability as P of x, probability of some unknown thing happening, it must be greater than 0 or equal to 0, greater than or equal to 1, using that that inequality stuff we learned earlier in the year, right? It could be zero, it could be one, but the probability is always going to be between zero or one. And in terms of percentages then, that's between zero percent and 100 percent, right? Because one would be 1.00, make that 100 percent. So probabilities will always be in that, in that range. Um, look, if you would, with me, page 365, at the very bottom, there's a little box here that says, what are the probabilities for these things? Well, it says the, prob uh, the probability for selecting each of the three possible students, probability of Alex being chosen is 120%, probability of Bill is 30%, probability of Carl is negative 50%. Are those valid probabilities? No. no. Can you have a negative 50%? No. Nor can you have 120%. No, those are not valid probabilities. Look at the next one. Probability of drawing four possible letters from a hat. Probability of an A is 3 to 5. Probability of B is 1 to 5. Probability of C is 2 to 5. And probability of D is 1 to 5. Are those valid probabilities? No. Why not? Don't right. Each of them is between 0 and 1, but they don't add up to 5 out of 5, right? They don't add up to 1. They must add up to exactly 1. Look at the last one. The probability of each of three available color, color colors. Probability of red, 0.1 or 10% or 1 to 10. Probability of white is 0.7. Probability of black is 0.2. Are those valid probabilities? They are all between 0 and 1. They do add up to exactly 1. So that sounds like a legitimate set of probabilities. Does that make sense? So there's some, some things there. Now, I mentioned a moment ago the probability of not drawing a green candy is going to be 3 fourths. That would be 1 minus 1 fourth, wouldn't it? Or 4 fourths minus 1 fourth. The probability of not drawing a green candy is 75. It's more likely you won't draw a green candy than you will. Well, that's 100% minus 25%, or you could say 1 minus 25%, correct? We call the probability of something not happening the complement. The complement. It's notated the probability of some event A with a little c up top. The little superscript c means the complement. So the probability of a complement is always equal to 1, which is 100%, minus the probability of whatever a might be. So a is just kind of chosen at random, like we usually use x in algebra. The probability of something, call it event a, occurring. Well, 1 minus that would be the probability of the complement, the probability that it doesn't happen. So, for instance, if you say, well, I've got a 1 in 12 chance that she says yes. I've thought through all her other responses she could possibly use. There's 11 bad responses I don't want. There's one response I do want. I want her to say yes. So that's a 1 to 12 probability she says yes. Well, what's the probability she doesn't? 11 to 12. 11 to 12. Very high probability she says no. So you have a choice to make, right? You either be a, a coward and never ask her, or, uh, but you'd be a safe coward. She didn't turn you down. Or you just be like, I'm just going to go ask her and get my heart broken. And you know, it's just your choice. You know? <laughs> In case you're wondering which one I was, I was generally the coward until it mattered most. Um, <laughs> I got over my cowardice. Uh, when it's the right girl, the cowardice goes away, by the way. So if you're scared to ask her, she ain't the right one anyway. Don't bother. Okay? It's pretty much a rule of thumb. Because if she's really the right one, you won't be scared to ask her. Strategy tip for you guys. And Lana's like, is that how it works? <laughs> anyway, questions and all on this. Questions and all on this. All right, let's take a look at page 366 together now. Go to the page if you haven't already. Page 366, you see that complementary probability uh, there in the blurb. Read about it last night for homework as well. Question number one. What is the name for any group of one or more outcomes? Event. It's an event. Okay, An event is that group of outcomes. The probability of an event occurring is, is the technical, mathy sounding name for something happening. All right, <laughs> an outcome is called an event. Um, here's a term I didn't give you yet, so go ahead and get this down. The name for the group that includes all possible outcomes is called the sample space. 
the sample space, kind of a technical term, but it's all the possible outcomes. The 20 candies in the bag would be your sample space. The 12 possible answers she could give you is the sample space. And Lana's like, I like some of those answers. I'm going to remember those. <laughs> or here's, here's a new one. I would, but my dad would shoot you. You know, that's a great yeah, answer to give. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just suddenly picturing you and then your dad, I was like, yeah, that's pretty much what Lana's dad would say. <laughs> well, I was like, I would, but my dad would shoot you and I don't want you to die. Um, oh, she loves me. <laughs> it's not what she said, but it's a gentle way to get put down, I guess. Anyway, sample space is all the possible outcomes. Uh, the name for the group that includes all outcomes that do not satisfy an event class. Oh, Complement is the term I just gave you. What's the sum of all the probabilities of all outcomes in the sample space? One. One, or 100%. One is the sum of all probabilities. And what is the possibility, probability excuse me, of an impossible event? Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Never in a million years. <laughs> now, I will say this. I will say this. My wife at one point, in course of conversation, had basically said about me, that's never going to happen, okay? And uh, within less than a year later, we were engaged, okay? So I'm just saying, guys, there may come a time where you're like, that's never, it's impossible. It could happen, okay? So I didn't even know about this until after we were married that she said it was never going to happen, but uh, I was like, well, I got you now, so too late. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, number six. What's the probability, well, I'm going to actually ask this first, and then we're going to express it. The probability of flipping tails for a coin flip, what would that probability be? Just one have a coin, two. heads or tails? One to two. One to two. There's only two. Well, some people would argue, what if it lands on the edge? Oh, really? If the ground is soft enough, it could absorb the impact, it could land on the edge, but assuming it lands on either heads or tails, okay, there's a one to two chance, right? Now, how would I notate the probability of flipping tails? How would I actually notate that? All right. Remember, you just put a capital P and then in parentheses. What do you want? Tails? All right. P and then in parentheses, tails. That's what it means by notation. Does that make sense? Okay. So P, parentheses. P and then in parentheses, the word tails. Probability of tails, we would represent oh. this way. And we'd say the prob probability of tails is a 1 to 2 probability. Do you have to put the 1 to 2? You don't have to put the answer, no. It, it just wanted the notation. Uh, Let's see, what's the probability of rolling a sum of 12 on two six-sided number cubes? All right, now, we actually won't go into this too much, but um, the probability of a 12, how would I notate probability of 12? P, so. Now think about it, what would you have to do with two dice to roll a 12? Two sixes. Two sixes, right? What's the probability you get one six on the one die? One to six. What's the probability you also get a six on the other die? One, one to six. six. But then you technically, we're going to talk about this later, you have to multiply those probabilities together to get the actual probability of the 12. But that's coming up later. But anyway, uh, what's the probability of not rolling a sum of 12? Well, anytime you have probability of not class, it's called the complement. And if we said probability of 12 is P parentheses 12, how would I notate not 12? P not. With a little superscript C. The little superscript C means the complement, meaning probability of not. So if the probability of 12 I said was a, ends up being 1 to 36, then 35 to 36 is the probability you ain't getting that 12 you want. Right? So if you're like, if I just roll a 12, I'll land on go, and I don't have to land on Boardwalk or Park Place for no other trip around the board, and maybe I'll get thrown in jail for a while, so I don't have to land on Boardwalk and Park Place, and somebody else will lose before I do. I don't know. <laughs> I'll inherit their properties. <laughs> um, but anyway, I haven't played Monopoly in years. Yeah. Um, my little sister, I used to play an awful lot. She'd always get mad. She would do bad, bad land deals, bad trade deals, almost as bad as NAFTA. Um, but <laughs> the worst hit trade deal in the history of trade deals, as Trump said. Anyway, she would do worse ones with me. I hope she's not watching. All right. Um, <laughs> the probability of a spinner, now we don't, can't actually calculate this, but how would we notate, just call it out, the probability of a spinner landing on an orange area? P, parentheses, orange. Uh. <laughs> uh, now, we don't know what the spinner looks like, so we can't calculate it. We can say it. Uh, what's the probability of drawing a tile, maybe out of a Scrabble bag, with the letter R on it? P parentheses R. And if we knew how many R's there were and how many tiles there were, we could calculate it, but we can't. Um, we already looked at number 11 indirectly. So what's the probability of flipping a heads if you're flipping a coin class? One to two. What's the probability of a tails? One to two. One to two. And those are the only probabilities, possibilities out there, right? So they should add up to one, and they do. Number 12. Uh, if you spin the spinner one time, what's the probability of spinning in the red area? 
one to six. You notice there are six colored sections on the spinner. One of them is red, so one to six. What's the probability of blue? Three to six. Three to six, but we need to reduce it to oh, um, one to two. Wait, What's the pro do you need to put in those? I'm not. I like, I like ratios. Huge fan of ratio. Um, I wrote it up there at one point. Uh, huge fan of ratios. <laughs> At one point, I wrote that I like ratios. I don't remember where it went. Uh, what's the probability of white? Uh, two to six. Which oh, reduces to one to three. One to three. All right, number 13. Jar of marbles, three yellow, five green, two purple. How many total? Ten. Ten. That's important. Keep that number ten in mind. All right, one marble is drawn from the jar. What's the probability of it being purple? Um, one to five. Two to, yeah, two to ten. Two to, two to ten, which reduces to one to five. She like, show off. <laughs> <laughs> Your probability went to I would, but dad would shoot you down to dad's going to shoot you anyway. All right, better be. I'm just kidding. She doesn't really hate you, I don't think. Um, <laughs> anyway, a green marble. What's the probability of green? One, one, to two. one to two. What's the probability of red? Wait, zero to ten. Wow. Oh, there, is no there aren't any red, so you can't draw. So you have a zero percent chance of red. Uh, by the way, I will say this, guys. Not asking her gives you a 0% chance of her saying yes. Asking her gives you that, like, 1% chance of her saying yes. So you still have better odds if you ask than if you don't ask, but your chance of heartbreak is greater because you still have hope until she turns you down or dad shoots you. All right, a yellow marble. <laughs> Three to ten. Three to ten. What about a marble that's not yellow? Seven. Seven to ten. How would I write probability of not yellow, Anna? Um... P equals, I mean parentheses, yellow C or something. There we go. P, yellow, yeah, probability of yellow, but the little C to indicate the complement, not yellow. Would be 7 to 10. <laughs> a number cube, numbers 1 to 6, what's the probability of 1? Um, 1 to 6. 1 to 6. Probability of 2? 2. 2. Well, 1 to 3. Oh, yeah. 1 to 6. There's only 1 2 on the die. Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> 1 to 6. All right, what's the probability of a number that isn't five? Five to six. Five to six, because there's five different numbers that aren't five. Five to six. What's the probability of an even number? One to two. One to two. One to two. Half of them are even. What's the probability of a seven? Zero to six. Zero to six. What's the probability of a number less than seven? Or in other words, one. It's going to happen. You're going to roll. It's like, all right, if I roll a number less than seven, she'll say yes. Yeah! Okay, you know it. <laughs> Unfortunately, no one tells her that's how it works, and she still says, my dad's going to shoot you. All right, uh, number 15. <laughs> I don't know why, Lana. I don't know. She's like, why do you do this, Mr. I don't know. All right, number 15. Pack of baseball trading cards has 35 cards. That's important to remember that. 28 are normal cards, 5 are rare cards, and 2 are special edition cards. What's the probability of a rare card? Wait, wait. Yeah, one to yeah. Seven. Five to thirty-five, so it's one to seven. There we go. Uh, you said wait, so I was waiting. Uh, what's the probability of a special edition card? Wait, um, two, two, yeah. And that doesn't reduce. Yay, two to thirty-five. What's the probability of a non-standard card? Non-standard. What is it? One to five. How many are not standard? Well, the five rare and the two special edition. Those seven are not standard cards. So seven of the 35 are non-standard. Does that make sense? Or you could say, well, what's the probability of standard? 28 to 35. So the probability of not standard is the complement. Seven to 35. A couple ways in which you could look at that. Well, seven to 35 reduces to one to five, right? So that's why. One to five would be your final answer. But seven to 35 is how we arrived at it. Uh, number 16. The names of the months of the year were written on separate papers. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, one paper is randomly drawn. What's the probability of April? One to 12. Here's a fun one. Think real quick. What's the probability of a month ending in R? Zero to 12? Because they are. So four to. Four to Wait, 12, so one to three. One to three. The September, October, November, December all end in R, so that's oh, four out of 12. End in, in R. R. I was thinking of start with uh, All right, how about this one? The probability of a month that it doesn't have 30 days. Wait, wait, wait. So 30 days as September, April, June, <laughs> and November. Wait, September. Oh. 30 days as September, <laughs> April, June, November. 
All the rest have 31, say February, which has 28, so we can give it 29. So how many have not 30 days? Five. 75. No. No. Wait, what? It's 6 over 12, so it's a half. 8 to 12. What? January doesn't have 30. February doesn't have 30. March doesn't have 30. April does. May doesn't have 30. June does. July, August don't have 30. September does. October doesn't have 30. Or has, oh, doesn't have 30. Have November. 30. And there's four that do have 30. Yeah. Okay. There are seven that have 31. And there's one that has 28 or 29. So oh, eight of them does don't. Not. I was thinking that does, does not have 30. So eight out of 12, which is two to three. All right, and then the last one, uh, a month that ends in Y. January, January, March. January, March. January, March. January, March. January, March. Don't forget May. May is May is in Y. Oh. <laughs> January, March. April. April. Which four? You're right. It's one to three. Which four months end in Y? January, February, March, July. There we go. It's four. So four. Yeah. yeah. January, February, May, oh, and July. So, July. Three. so one to three yeah. is your answer there. Oh, uh, let's see. Number 17, yes or, or why is this not valid? If someone said tomorrow there's a, y'all are dismissed, y'all say with me, tomorrow there's a 30% probability it will rain and a 55% probability it will not rain. That can't work, why not? Because it doesn't add up. It's yeah. got to add up to 100% or 1. On the red team, the probability of the basketball team losing their next game is negative 0.24. It's you can't have negatives. Zero. You can't have a value lower than zero. The, the lowest chance of losing would be 0%. I'm not going to say what it is for our basketball team. Well, anyway, <laughs> we'll keep that off YouTube. Uh, no homework this evening. Have a wonderful rest of your day. You are dismissed.